with GC ambitions, this could be a difficult moment for them. Riders from a giant Alpacine. And that's one of the GC contenders, uh, Warren Barguy, the Frenchman who we've been talking about. Uh, so a big crash there. One of the um, Jelly Belly riders down also. So uh, just um, a touch of wheels, bang, uh, the concentration down, riders down in the deck. And it doesn't look good for uh, Warren Barguy because, as you said, outside the uh, f the uh, three-kilometre rule. So it does look as if the giant uh, Alpacin rider is going to lose some time today. I think that might have been Tanovici. Meanwhile, let's uh, Tanovici for Jelly Bean. Jelly Belly. Or was it Fred Rodriguez? Yeah, it could well have been Fred Rodriguez in his final year of racing. The veteran, oldest rider in the race and uh, real hero, former national road race champion. Fred Rodriguez might have fancied his chances to get up in the stage now he's just getting up without a bicycle so disappointment for him no luck for fred rodriguez he'll take a bike and just roll through to the finish and he'll uh, race on through this race riders coming through they were off the back and i really would like to see what's happening up front we're going to pick up this uh, crash again Racing through this left-hander and uh, touch of wheels in the bunch on the right-hand side, carnage ensues. Oh, spoke a little bit too soon after getting through yesterday's stage without any difficulty. Not too many riders going down, but uh, lots and lots of riders delayed there. Yeah, that's the importance. A lot of riders able to uh, put their foot down, but uh, this is the real importance um, to be able to um, uh, stay near the front of the peloton. Very important to stay near the front of the peloton when you come up to a finishing circuit. And that's why we've seen the uh, Etics uh, Quick Step boys take control. They didn't want to be, uh, you know, let the Optum team come to the front and let them onto the circuit. So they wanted to take control because they know how fast and furious these uh, riders race around these circuits. Well, Peter Kenyuk. We had mentioned at the back for Team Sky was one of the riders delayed and he had to take to the path on the left-hand side. I wonder if he'll be able to make it back in here. It's a much reduced peloton chasing down the riders from the breakaway. Remaining three riders looks as if they've jettisoned Luis Romero and absolutely charging along. Markel Iritzar from Trek Factor Racing in his wheel, Daniel Oss. And just behind them, Robin Carpenter from the Hincapi Racing Team. The local hero getting a big cheer into the town of Lodi. Two laps to go now, and that's the size of the peloton that are chasing them down. Drapak, they believe they're on the front, the Australian team. Can they pull a fast one? Drapak, marshalled by Graham Brown. It's the red jerseys of the Australian Drapak professional cycling team on the front of the peloton inside the last uh, six kilometers as uh, Wouter Whippert lines up for perhaps an opportunity to take a famous victory into low tide. The peloton absolutely strung out. It's not as big as it was, but riders still trying to get back on after that uh, crash a little while ago. The last indication we got 25 seconds to three riders up front as they desperately trying to cling on to their advantage. It's going to be tough for them to do it. It's been a brave effort from them, and they're still hanging on to something of a lead. So will they manage it inside the final four and a half miles? Yeah, this lap is 3.6 kilometres from the last corner. It's about 400 metres. So uh, getting in the right position is crucial. You can just see the peloton all lined out here. Nice to see the second division drapak team towards the front trying to boss things. But we've seen a lot of team teams try to do this yesterday. And the Etics uh, Quick Step boys just sat back, allowed this to happen, and uh, delivered Mark Cavendish perfectly. But there's still a bit of riding in the front with Os, Irizar and Carpenter hanging on to 25 seconds as we see the uh, nose of the peloton snaking across the road this is a big big effort and i'm pretty sure that uh, very soon we'll see the world tour teams of etics quick step try and shut this down so now it's daniel Oss on the front grinding out an absolutely massive gear but look at the contrast in speed 27 miles an hour against almost uh, 35 on the front of the main peloton drapak are racing across this gap it's all up for these guys. They're about to be uh, closed down inside the final six and a half kilometers with the red of the Drapak professional team from Australia, marshaled by uh, Graham Brown. There's not too much you can teach him about how to organize a lead out. Have they got the power, though, to hold off the likes of Edix Quickstep? 
lined up behind them and waiting to take it up. Edix Quickstep in the uh, dark jerseys with the white sleeves. And then the fluorescent colours of Tinkoff Saxo have got themselves organised for Peter Sagan. Daniel Oss pushing on, assisted by the diminutive figure of Robin Carpenter of Hincapi Racing Team. Still hanging on to a 20-second advantage, but oh, it's just under six kilometres to go. I don't think that gap is uh, quite uh, 20 seconds. Looks more like uh, 10 to me as they come up to this uh, left-hander. Still uh, many teams fighting to get to the front of this peloton. As uh, Irizar takes them round that left-hander, just look behind. We see the one kilometre, and they'll f cross the finishing line, and they'll get the bell. So left-hander into the kite. I will present them with 1,000 metres to go after they do another lap. They're going to see the finish line again just to get a look at it. And then they'll be sprinting for real. Oss on the front. Carpenter hanging on. Is Iritzar having a little look over his shoulder? Who's going to fire? I suspect some. Oh, and look at Bargreel. Has he got an injury? It looks as if he's got an injury. He's just winding his way towards the finish and hoping that a little bit of physio might get him back uh, out and racing again tomorrow. So disappointment for the Frenchman who would have uh, fancied flexing his climbing muscles a little bit uh, tomorrow and Saturday might still happen for him. Today, though, was just a stage to be got through and, uh, well, he's going to get through it at the back of the bunch, the main bunch, crowding their way down into this right-hander and then stretching long. Three leaders, the peloton of 139 riders. I'm not sure there's uh, that many in there now. Ten seconds is indicated as they go to the finish line. One more lap to do. It's Upton that have control of the peloton as they gather up the riders from the breakaway. So Oss, uh, Carpenter and Iritzar, what a great job they've done uh, this afternoon. And Upton hand over to Edix Quickstep that are going to take us through this final lap. This is exactly what they did uh, yesterday and delivered Mark Cavendish perfectly. We still have uh, three riders in front of Mark Cavendish and that's uh, Matteo Trentin. It's at the front as we see another rider just uh, go past and it's going to be very difficult to control this uh, whole peloton as uh, many riders are just kind of hanging on the back of the peloton but it does look as if we have got um, still Matteo Trentin leading the peloton. It says 4.6 kilometres to go on the top of your screen, but I can tell you it's uh, more like 3.6. Three, two, one, zero, Inside the final three and a half kilometres of the second stage of Amgen Tour of California, and riders piling down. There's no control there. Everybody wants to get to the front. Real squeeze point there, but they managed to uh, get around that without any difficulty. Mark Cavendish looks secure behind his teammates the edix quickstep squad on the right hand side of picture in the middle for the tinkoff uh, saxo squad and just at the back of their group is uh, peter sagan and now drapak trying to move back to the front again we've got three uh, lead outs now in the uh, left hand side we've got the uh, edix quickstep looking after mark cavendish in the middle of the uh, fluorescent yellow and that's the uh, tinkoff with uh, peter sagan and uh, Whippert is getting led out by his uh, Drapak uh, team, and uh, they're in the red. Many other teams having a sniff around on the wheels of Sagan and Mark Cavendish. Very critical times now. You really want to take this uh, control of this into the last kilometre and uh, try and hang on. The last corner is a right-hand corner. Comes with about 400 metres to go. And just see Peter Sagan right up near the front. And uh, the riders from Etis Quickstep have been on the front all day. Two kilometres to go now as we see see the Ala Philippe brings them towards the front now. Oh, it's getting busy in there. Edix quick step back into control at the front of the peloton. Three riders, is there for uh, Mark Cavendish, or is it just two that he's got to make do with for the final two kilometres? Will that be enough? You'd sort of think on yesterday's form that it ought to be, but there's plenty of teams in there that believe that they can pull a fast one on the big World Tour team this afternoon. It is uh, Mark Cavendish sitting third rider in the peloton as they go through the final two kilometres. Will he drop back a little bit to try and slingshot through? Think of Saxo to their right, to the left of screen as we look at the fluorescent uh, yellow jerseys and at the back of their group. They've got the mountains jersey, the polka dots. You can just see peeking out from behind these uh, two Think of Saxo riders. Looks like 
Sagan has managed to get the wheel of Mark Cavendish as a couple of Drapak riders move up on the right-hand side. Well, Mark Cavendish is actually sitting behind uh, Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan is right behind his two lead-out men. They've sat back pretty much all day, just committing one rider. One kilometre to go now, and the uh, peloton now led by two lead-out men for uh, Peter Sagan, with Mark Renshaw sitting just behind Sagan with uh, Mark Cavendish on the wheel. So it's Tinkoff Saxo that are going to take it up inside the final kilometre on stage two of Amgen Tour of California. It's going to be the anticipated massive charge to the line in Lodi. Just one rider left for uh, Peter Sagan on the front of the peloton. He's sitting in second position and Mark Cavendish in a position to uh, just stalk his rival through to the finish line. They're lined out in one big uh, long line through to the finish, absolutely charging down there. The yellow jersey of Mark Cavendish sitting fourth rider. Two wheels in front of him is uh, Mark Renshaw ready to lead him out. And just in front of uh, Mark Cavendish at the moment, he's picked up the wheel of his big rival, Peter Sagan. So it's Sagan that's going to have to fire first if Cavendish doesn't get to them. And they've pulled a fast one. Is that Whippert from Drapak who launches first? Whippert from Drapak in the red on the middle of the picture, but on the left in the yellow. It is. Is Mark Cavendish. Cavendish, well, he's not confident enough to throw his arms in the air. Was it Cavendish? Was it Peter Sagan? Whippert getting involved in that sprint and giving us a little bit of doubt about who actually got the victory on stage two of the uh, Tour of California. That was a much closer one than yesterday, and we're going to have to wait for the photograph to find out who won. Yeah, very close finish indeed, and it's fact the... Uh, Walter Whipper, I think it is, for uh, Drapak leading out. And um, Sagan just trying to hold off uh, Cavendish. Cavendish coming very quickly now. They get uh, split between the uh, Drapak uh, rider. They go, Mark Cavendish goes right and Sagan goes left. Wasn't the perfect lead out uh, for uh, Mark Cavendish, but I think he takes his second stage win now. Oh, it looks as if Cavendish might just have got there by the narrowest of margins. But uh, Sagan gets... A bike throw, a decent effort, but if I was asked to call it, I'd say Cavendish got the victory.